So, so far, when we talked about working with interest, we have talked about simple interest and compound interest. And the issue with those formulas is that it's based on the idea that I'm putting a fixed money into account and just letting it sit there. And really, that's not very realistic. More than likely, most people don't have a fixed amount of money they can set aside. More realistically would be if we went through and make periodic deposits, maybe putting money into an account once a month. And that's where we get into these formulas down here, the annuities formulas. And so we're going to talk about section 7.5 today, which talks about working with annuities. If we invest a fixed amount in account paying compound interest, we used the formula previously to calculate how much will be in the account after a certain period of time. Many times, however, people do not invest a fixed amount but make periodic deposits into account. An annuity is a sequence of equal periodic deposits. If the deposits are made at the same time that interest is calculated, then the, in, the, excuse me, then the annuity is called an ordinary annuity. With such an annuity, if interest is compounded monthly, then the deposits are made monthly at the same time. If interest is compounded weekly, then the deposits are made weekly at the same time and so forth. The amount of the annuity is the sum of all deposits made plus all the interest earned. When working with an annuity, we will need to calculate the interest rate earned per pay period. Thus, if an account pays 6% interest compounded quarterly, then the interest rate per pay period is I equals R over M, which would be 0 0.006 over 4. And if you do that division, that gives us 0 0.015. The number M of pay periods is equal to the number of times interest is calculated per year times the number of years. Thus, if interest is compounded quarterly for five years, then the number of payment periods will be M, which equals N times T, which would be 4 times 5 is 20. We'll go on that P sub M be the amount of money deposited at each payment period for M payment periods in an account that earns I interest rate per payment period. When the last deposit of P sub M is made at the nth payment, the amount that was deposited at the first payment period would have earned interest for M minus 1 payment periods. All right, so if I'm making 20 deposits over four years, one each quarter, by the time I get to that last deposit, that first deposit has been sitting there for 19 payment periods. The amount of money that the first deposit be <coughs> becomes at the end of the annuity is P sub M times 1 plus I raised to the N minus 1. Now, the uh, amount that was deposited in the second period would have the interest for M minus 2 pay payment periods. So my de second deposit would have had been calculated interest for 18 payment periods. And so the amount of money that, uh, um, that should be second deposit. Deposit becomes at the end of the payment period is P sub N times 1 plus I raised to the N minus 2. We can continue this pattern for all the payments. The amount A of the annuity is just the sum of all the amounts generated from the deposits from each payment period. So we just add them up. And then we're going to reorder them. In mathematics, this is known as a geometric uh, series, and there's a formula that allows us to simplify our formula to this. So if we turn the page, this is what the book calls Theorem 1. The amount of annuity, let P sub M be the amount deposited at the end of each payment period for an annuity. If annuity pays I interest rate per payment period, the amount of A of the annuity after M deposits is A equals P sub N times the quantity, parentheses 1 plus I raised to the M, subtract 1, all divided by I. And this is a little bit different from the book. 
the book just used P here. I'm using P sub n to differentiate that we're making periodic payments as opposed to the principal in the previous formulas. Since n is the number of pay, uh, pay periods, it's equal to the number of times that interest is calculated per year times the number of years t. We saw that on the previous page. That's how we defined n. Also, the interest rate per, per, per pay period, i, is equal to the annual interest rate, r, divided by the number of times interest is calculated per year. That's how we defined it on the last page here. So replacing m with nt and replacing i with r over n is the following formula. Let p sub n be the amount deposited at the end of each payment period for an annuity. If the annuity pays an annual interest rate r as a decimal compound n times a year, the amount of A of the annuity after t years is A equals P sub n times the quantity time oh, quantity 1 plus R over n raised to the nt minus 1 all divided by R over n. Again, note the book uses a plain P in their formula as opposed to P sub m in this formula. We will use P sub n to distinguish it from the principle. So let's turn to then page 116 of our workbook and let's have a look at problem number one. Leroy contributes $250 at the end of each quarter to his tax shelter annuity. What will be the value of his annuity after the 80th deposit, 20 years, if interest is 8% compounded quarterly? So we're using our first formula here under annuities. And remember, you'll have a copy of this formula sheet when you take the test. So let's go ahead and first just write down the formula. So we're just literally copying down the formula as it's written. Now looking at this problem, P sub M is 250. That's how much he's depositing. Our interest rate is 8%, but we're going to write that as a decimal, 0.08. And then let's see, we have N. It's compounded quarterly, so it means N is 4. And then we're doing this for 20 years. We don't even need the information about the 80th deposit. So, we're going to go ahead and plug these numbers into our formula. So we're going to have uh, 250 bracket parentheses 1 plus our R here is 0 0.08 n is 4 and this is raised to the 4 our time here is 20 minus 1 and on the bottom slide this up a little bit We're going to have zero point zero eight. On the bottom, we have four. 
And now it just becomes like an exercise we did um, previously on our calculator. We're just going to go ahead and plug this all into our calculator. So let me slide over to we get to a good spot. Alright, so first step, step is hit our fraction key, type in the 250, open parentheses, open parentheses, 1 plus, do our fraction key, 0 0.08, hit the down arrow, 4, hit the right arrow, close the parentheses, carry key, Four parentheses twenty close parentheses. Now I need to hit the down arrow, and remember this here is a subtracting one. So I'm going to do a subtraction one. Close the parentheses, and then I'm going to hit the uh, down arrow. Do parentheses fraction. 0 0.08 down arrow 4 right arrow close the parentheses and then just kind of double check see if you got everything entered in correctly and you can always hit your arrow here to make sure this side here again make sure this is a subtraction don't use the negative sign hit enter and so that gives us our answer So that'd be forty-eight thousand four hundred forty-two dollars and ninety-nine cents. Now you can ask yourself, well, how much of this money came from deposits? And how much actually came from um, interest? Well, he made, uh, and the problem, he made 80 deposits. So if we take 250 times 80, would be 250 times 80. And that will give you twenty thousand dollars. So that's the amount from the deposits. The amount from interest then would be the difference to subtract these two. Now it gives $28,442.99 in interest. So actually made more money in interest than on the deposits. So you can start seeing the power of um, compound interest here. Uh, I believe it was Albert Einstein's referred to uh, compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world. Let's go ahead and turn the page. Juanita decides instead of buying a new car every five years and being stuck making car payments of $400 per month, she decides to invest $400 per month in a mutual fund that historically returns 9% growth compound monthly. If she does this for 40 years, how much will she have in her mutual fund at the end of 40 years? So we're going to go ahead and write down our same formula. So that's going to be P sub M 1 plus 
r over n raised to the nt, subtract 1, over um, r divided by n. So p sub n is our $400 per month. Our R value, 9% growth rate, so that would be 0 0.09. It's compounded monthly, so N here is going to be 12. And we're letting this ride for 40 years. So, let's plug the numbers in. So we're going to have 400 1 plus R value is 0 0.09. Our end value here is 12. Our T value here is 40. Minus 1. So now we're going to go and put that into our calculator. So let me slide this over a little bit so we can get our calculator on the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and, oops, turned off. So let me clear it out. So I'm going to do my fraction key, 400, parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus, do our fraction key, 0 0.09 over 12, close, or right arrow, close the parentheses, care key, 12, parentheses, 40, Close the parentheses. Remember, hit your right arrow key to get back off of that exponent. Do your subtract 1. Close the parentheses. And then do your down arrow. We're going to do parentheses fraction. 0 0.09. Down arrow 12. Right arrow. Close the parentheses. And then we're going to hit enter. So we get 1,872,000 times 1,000, $528.11 if we round that. I had a friend that served with me on um, my son's school's uh, PTO many years ago. And he would always would buy a new car every five years. And he said, so long as my car payments were $400 a month, he was good. And as soon as he had the car pay off, he then traded in, get another car. So if he did this every five years for 40 years, that would be eight brand new cars. Is eight brand new cars worth that much money? That would make a very nice retirement putting that money into an account, let the compound interest work for you. You'd have close to two million dollars. And keep in mind, <coughs> you're depositing four hundred dollars per month for twelve months for forty years. You've only put in less than two hundred thousand dollars. 
the compound interest has made all the rest for you. Something to consider. Let me go and circle this. And that would be your answer.